you were shirtless lifting weights while whiskey or some alcohol was poured into your mouth by Alex Jones in this movie, and then you did the same to him. That's true. Mm -hmm. This feels like an interrogation. Uh, so Alex was a uh, was a part of this film. He was like throughout throughout the narrative, and yet you had a great interview with him. Uh, what did you learn about interacting with Alex Alex uh, Jones well, from making this film? For one, is that he's the exact same off camera as he is on camera. Yeah, it's not an act. He told me that all real Americans die before fifty eight. He mentioned Sean Connery and a few others, and. Uh, how old is he? Getting up there. Yeah. I think early 50s. Yeah. Um, I just found it fascinating. I mean, how how nice his studio is. I mean, the guy's got like an MSNBC level setup. Mm -hmm. I actually had a great time with him, you know? I mean, it, it's bizarre because having him in that movie created so many problems for me. And when I interviewed him, you know, I, I didn't necessarily portray him in the best light. You know, we joked around a bit, but it wasn't an Alex Jones hit piece necessarily. Mm -hmm. But I like to think that I was a bit critical of him in the film, especially the ways that he antagonized his supporters to storm the Capitol or yeah. to follow that trajectory. Um, he told me when I met with him, he was like, I know you think that having me in this movie is a good idea, but um, you're going to have some serious backlash because of that. At the time, I was like, man, it's fine, you know. It's all good. We're just hanging out, drinking whiskey, doing bench presses, drinking Jameson. It's all good. It was, uh, first of all, I had to campaign to get him in the film because the studios were like, we don't, there was a bizarre time around like, I think it was 2018 where deplatforming was the big thing that people were encouraging. It said, giving a platform to problematic ideologies will in turn expand their reach. And so even extending your platform to someone who's problematic is helping them aka destroying humanity, whatever it was. So that was the whole thing. And uh, when I did this media training that was, you know, mandated by HBO, it was all training and how to defend from that exact question. Mm -hmm. They said, when, you, when we put you on NPR and we put you on CNN, they're going to ask you about platforming problematic ideologies. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have to say stuff like sunlight is the best disinfectant. I believe that e extremism only goes away when you shine a light on it because leaving it in the dark will only allow it to grow. They gave me like 15 pointers. Um, I didn't use any of those pointers because I'm not the kind of person who wants to be media trained. I like, I like to speak freely. But in the promotional run for the film, you know, when I went on CNN, this was a crazy experience. So I went on CNN and thankfully <laughs> my friend was with me. And so I'm on CNN and- By the way, your friend is chilling in sunglasses laying in the couch right now. <laughs> That's most, Larry Susan. It's, like the, <laughs> the, it's a, a mix of like the dude from Big Lebowski and uh, uh, the Brad Pitt role in uh, True Romance. Yeah. You know that reference? No, or? but I mean, I'm sure it describes Larry Susan. Like he kind of looks like Brad Pitt. Jack Kerouac. <laughs> 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 yeah, <it's, laughs> Yeah. So so HBO had a press tour set up for me. And yeah. the main ones were CNN and NPR. And so they said we're going to you're going to go on CNN on the Don Lemon Morning Show. And he's going to ask you about your life, what led up to the movie, what we can expect. So I get in the studio, it's about seven o'clock in the morning in New York at a show the night before at Times Square. So I'm like groggy eyed, whatever. They put the lav on me. Boom, I'm live on CNN Sunday morning. And he goes, how would you describe Enrique Tarrio's mental state in the lead up to the Capitol insurrection. And I'm I'm looking around, I'm like, is this guy serious? Like, am I <laughs> am I sandwiched in the January 6th hit piece right now? Yeah. I thought it was about me. Yeah. And so I told him, it's not about Enrique Tario. It's about how companies like Fox, MSNBC, and even your station, CNN, <sighs> use the 24 hour news cycle to enrage people to generate ad revenue yeah. and pit Americans against each other during times like that. Yeah. And he said, there's nothing fake about CNN. And I said, I didn't say you were fake news. I'm not saying you're lying, but you're directly antagonizing and, and stirring people up against half the country because you need money during to support a dying platform. You said that. Pretty much. Nice. And uh, great. You know, I was so my mom was watching it. She was texting me. She's like, what are you doing? And I was like, I don't know. And so he goes, Why'd you extend the platform to Alex Jones? Mm -hmm. And I go, I don't know. I just wanted to drink some Jameson and lift some weights with him. <laughs> you know, I'm just at this point, I don't support that kind of media. I don't support CNN. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I just, I didn't give them much information about Alex. 
but it was very awkward. They never posted the segment online. When I got off of that interview, uh, I had a handler that A24 assigned to me. So I had someone with me and she, you could tell she was flustered. Like she was furious about what I just did. And so she goes, I just got an email from Time Warner C-Suite. And I go, what's Time Warner C-Suite? She says, I don't know if you know this, but the same people who own, who own the same people who own CNN own HBO and it's Time Warner. And so they canceled my press tour. So my press tour was finished. <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, all the late night shows that I was supposed to go on, I was supposed to go on like the late night shows. And um, that was off the table because they were worried that I was like a loose cannon, I think. And then the only remaining uh, appearance I had left was NPR in Boston. And that was supposed to be a, a premiere. So it wasn't supposed to be an interrogation. It wasn't supposed to be anything like that. Mm -hmm. it supposed to be a premiere in front of a live audience where they watch the film and I show up after for a Q&A. So I'm like, all right, whatever. It's kind of weird. They only have this one press opportunity left. I kind of felt bad that I ruined the entire press tour by confronting Don Lemon. But at this point, I wanted to just do this final one, especially because it was a, a viewing. And I was like, cool. I want to. I sat in the audience. I watched people laugh to the film. It was awesome. So I go backstage and there's an NPR journalist waiting for me. And nothing against people who wear masks, but she had two N95s on. And yeah. I'm not, two N95s is, it's, it, a lot. It's, it's, <laughs> it's over the line. So I go, hey, great to meet you. She doesn't shake my hand. Yeah. And I go, why not? And she goes, you've been around some people who I don't want their germs. Yeah. Oh. And I'm like, okay, okay, this is weird. I thought this is a sort of like fun premiere for my movie. We sit down. The first thing she asks me is, how do you think the Sandy Hook families would feel about you platforming one of the most despicable Americans in history, Alex Jones? Mm -hmm. In front of a live audience. NPR never published this. The only recordings of it are by a fan named Rob in Boston who put it on YouTube, it's vertical phone footage. And I literally am like, well, the Sandy Hook family's lawyer, Mark Bankston, who represented them in court in Connecticut, told me specifically that Leonard Posner, the father of Noah Posner, who died at Sandy Hook, was a huge fan of the film. And so I said that to her, and that kind of just like silenced that conversation. But the rest of the whole conversation was just about exploitation and why are you platforming mentally ill people and giving a platform to conspiracies like QAnon? Don't you feel like you're a part of their spread? Some would call you a misinformation reporter. All this crazy stuff. And yeah, next day hit the fan. Fuck all those people. That film, just in case you, have, you don't get a chance to see it and you should, you're critical of Alex Jones in, a, in the most artful way like it was the correct way to be critical it, it showed him to uh be more interested in the, the grift of it yeah they, uh, and you didn't do it in a like a pointing fingers and like saying um the, in the kind of npr way that you just mentioned it's but more like a human way like this is tragedies happen all over the world and there's grifters that roll in and then take advantage of it in interesting ways. And then yes. human beings get swept up on either side of it. And it's revealing the humor, the absurdity of it all. And it was done masterfully. It was done like for people who criticize you for platforming Alex Jones or whatever. Yeah. The film from a political perspective is probably leans very much left, Yeah, like heavily left, but does it without that exhausting energy of like judging right just this kind of uh, you know yeah two two masks kind of judging yeah and that, it, it was just uh it, when all that was happening when i was under fire from the mainstream press for platforming alex jones i thought back to what he said to me and doesn't mean i agree with everything he says but he told me you're going to be in trouble with these people if you uh put me in your in your video and you know it wasn't too bad of trouble but Definitely, I, I do think sometimes what the film would have been like without him. And I think that it was worth it because his scene is so funny to me and it brings me back to a different time in my life and I'm happy that that scene's out there. I think it was, it was really well done. It Thanks, showed man. The, the layering of it all, the entertainment, plus sort of not considering from his perspective the consequences of like rallying people up in this way that it's not just, I mean, you really highlight this in the interview, like it's he keeps saying it's info wars, but then there's always kind of a sense that info wars can turn to actual like civil war. And 
Yeah. But maybe not. Maybe it's uh, all just a circus. Like we play for each other. If you look at the speech he did on January 5th, it was said, he said tomorrow, you know, millions of patriotic Americans will take our country back. Yeah. So he eggs people on and then when it gets hot, he steps away. Yeah. But like you said, the thing he told you, he turned out to be right. Oh, yeah. And uh, the frogs are becoming gay. They've always been gay. <laughs> well. Saying yeah. frogs are straight is even crazier. I've read stories where you kiss one and it becomes a prince. And, and yeah, that shit's true. 100%.